Hi, welcome to the Quantity Surveying Studio. If you have not yet subscribed to Quantity Surveying Studio, please do subscribe for quantity surveying related videos. Please do share this channel to your quantity surveying colleagues, whoever is interested in this field. Please do like the videos if you have enjoyed it, if you have got some knowledge out of it. This video is going to be something general, like kind of a flowchart of how a perfect, not a perfect, like a ideal quantity surveying career could progress in a very good way. So for that, the, I can see this flowchart. I'll be just using this flowchart for this entire video, just this simple flowchart to make you understand how a QS progresses in his career. So this is just a ideal situation. Need not be the case of many people who are into the quantity surveying field who have been experience in this field they would have not gone through this way but if this is the way that you opt for if you're someone who is new to this field who is or planning to get into this field then if you follow this flowchart then what my opinion is that you will become a very talented uh, knowledgeable quantity surveyor with good experience good knowledge and definitely you will have a great career and a great demand in this quantity surveying world where there is actually a lot of shortage for skilled quantity surveyors so in this scenario if this path is followed then definitely you're going to have a great career in this field so when you start off as a quantity surveyor, it is always good to start in a subcontracting company. It could be a specialist subcontractor. You, you might be knowing a lot of subcontractors. It would be specialized in a particular type of work. Might be just the mechanical work, just the HVAC works, or just the electrical work, or just the maybe the interior fit out works, or they will be expert in just the road works. An ideal start is to get into a subcontractor wherein your task would be the complete cost management of that subcontracting activity you will need to prepare your own bills your claims your variation you need to you know, prepare your tenders for that for a particular project try your best to get that project awarded to the company to and put up the best rates so that you and the client have a win-win situation so you'll be completely involved in making the invoices from the scratch so you'll understand how a bill is prepared how uh, when a variation is comes up how you need to identify it how you need to notify it to the consultant or the client or the main contractor whoever is above you um, who with whom the contract is with, within in that particular project so here you learn a lot of things to manage yeah the type of work might be small because since you're a specialist contractor but then you will be involved in the complete activities a QS should undergo so that would be the ideal the beginning getting into a subcontractor so after working there for maybe two three years then you can start searching for a main contractor you can start trying out to move into a main contractor so main contractor again here the one of the most important responsibility will be a coordination that you will be playing between the subcontractor and the consult so there will be definitely some specialist subcontractor under this main contractor so you need to certify their bills as a main contractor you need to get information from them and then you need to invoice your bills to the consultant or the client whoever is involved so here it is more of a coordination that happened and again the other aspects like the variation the claims subcontractor management so here subcontractor management will be a crucial role that you will be playing because as a subcontractor you may not be having any other con contractors under you you will be having a small in-house team who will be doing the work but as a main contractor, when you move to the main contractor side, there will be a lot of subcontractors. So doing their invoicing, claim, you know, verifying their bills, verifying their claims and variations will be a new value addition to you. This could be something to add on to your CV. Again, you will need to get your own bills certified from the consultant. So for that, you will need to provide them with justifications the backup so that will be some new new roles and additions added to your cv so now after that main contractors work or working there for around maybe again another two three years the next step would be ideally to move into the consultant side so again consultant side will be involved 
in the complete pre-contract and post-contract stages of a project wherein you need to prepare the budget you need to prepare the tender document you need to send out set up the tender send out the tender to the market get quotation verify it provide value engineering to the client these are all the pre-contract steps provide the value engineering tendering prepare cost plans prepare an accurate initially it will be a budgeting then in different various cost plan stage you will have to prepare the budget and finally prepare prepare the final BOQs according to the complete documents provided and then get the quotations compare it with your budgets and then finalize the right contractor with negotiation these are all the again new responsibilities that you'll be doing in the consultant side and in the post contract stage again you will have to verify whatever bills is provided from the main contractor whatever variations are provided you need to you know have that confidence by that time you have moved to the consultant you would have got an idea like what a subcontractor would be doing how a main contractor works how what their thinking would be whenever a claim is made so all these will be helpful when you move to the consultant side and then you will be under, you'll need you'll understand whether that variation is under the scope of the work or if it is out of scope if at all it is out of scope whatever prices they have provided is that right is that justifiable is it above the market rate so all these you know, steps or all these responsibilities can be easily done by you as a consultant and getting all these experiences again add on to your cv then finally comes the client client side that would be i i would say the maybe final say some people they they will be ending their career on the consultant side some they're ending they will be reaching the top position of a main contractor company some then the subcontractors also it depends upon their interest some would be ending in the client sites different position in different types of client side the higher position the client side is basically to approve all these budgets understand whether it is matching with their you know, budget requirement and then choosing the right consultant choosing or approving the right main contractor subcontractor so by the time you reach this client client side stage you will be having all those experience to understand how all these organizations work but client side construction team would be relatively very small team and you know, reaching there you would need really good experience in all these fields so getting all all these documents are fine or not whether specifications are matching whether the design is according to what the requirement is approving the designs approving the budget specifications making sure the work is going according to all those these are the different tasks of a client also the invoicing part to check whether the payments are being made in a right way or the invoicing is done whether the certification of the bills are done in a right way the audit is done from the client side also even the consultant side it is called an audit auditing of their main contractor side invoices bill so this is the ideal situation where you can have a good career in the construction or in the construction sector as a cost manager or a qs so hope this short general video was informative thanks a lot for watching this video take care bye